What's going on guys? It's ACP here. I'm here to bring you a guide to reasoning gate combo. Um, if you've been playing GOAT format lately, you know this has been a pretty hot deck, somewhat controversial. Um, so this guide was um, originally written by uh, a dude named Thickmaster, but I'm going to be going over it today. So uh, what exactly is reasoning gate combo? And um, basically, as you know, you can tell from the name, it is really just a sort of fast-paced deck that uses uh, reasoning and monster gate to bring out a bunch of powerful monsters. So um, pretty straightforward. And you might be thinking, what kind of monsters? Um, these are typically things like uh, Dark Magician of Chaos, Jinzo, Sacred Crane, and then you know a few other choice monsters depending on what the user likes. Um, Sacred Crane is nice because um, it's a light monster that draws a card, helps keep our combo going. Obviously, Jinzo makes sure you know we don't get screwed by uh, Torrential Tribute or Mirror Force. And Dark Magician of Chaos is definitely the strongest one. Um, gets back any spell, and anyone who plays GOAT format knows that this format has a lot of powerful spells. Um, so once you start bringing out those monsters, you're going to start thinking about how to set up um, your kill turn. And that's usually going to happen with um, you know cards like Giant Trunade to clear all the spells or traps, um, and then like Chaos Sorcerer with Dimension Fusion to bring a bunch of uh, strong things back from uh, the Banished Zone. And um, so the main core interaction with the deck, as you can tell, is um, using Reasoning and Monster Gate to bring out. Um, you know, mainly Dark Magician of Chaos and Sacred Crane to keep the combo going. So, like, the nice thing about Sacred Crane in particular is that, like, you know, if you're reasoning into it, you can draw a card off of it, and then you can Monster Gate it, and you haven't, like, lost cards because the crane replaced itself. And then, you know, if you banish the crane later as the Light Monster for Chaos Sorcerer, you can, you know, bring it back with Dimension Fusion, draw even more cards, um, and so on. So another potential um, interaction with this deck is um, Scapegoat. So Go Format, of course, you got a lot of people playing Scapegoat, but this deck uses it um, a bit differently than most. Um, and not all Reasoning Gate decks play Scapegoat, but the ones that do like it because, you know, obviously you can combo it with Metamorphosis, a lot of people are doing that. But here we can also combo it with Monster Gate. So if you open something like, um, you know, Scapegoat and two Monster Gates, you can use the first two GOAT tokens to like block a couple of hits, um, help, um, you know, give you some time to draw into combo pieces, and then with the remaining tokens, you can just monster gate them off, which is pretty cool. And probably, in my opinion, the most important interaction with this deck is um, Dark Magician of Chaos and Dimension Fusion. And doing this is really what um, enables some of the decks uh, more broken plays um, you know, I'm talking things like, you know, using several Trinity pieces in one turn. Um, if you special summon like a Dark Magician of Chaos off the Reasoning, you can often use Dark Magician of Chaos's effect to get back Monster Gate, Monster Gate your Dark Magician of Chaos, and then bring it back with Dimension Fusion and get something else back. So, um, things can get really crazy. And, you know, Dark Magician of Chaos, of course, can bring back the Dimension Fusion to your hand. So you can like bring a Dark Magician to Chaos, add your Dimension Fusion to your hand, tribute it for Jinzo, Dimension Fusion it back, and you know, it's, it's pretty nuts. So this is your basic deck skeleton. Um, here you'll notice that we're playing all four Chaos Monsters, um, and that's because we can bring them out so quickly and they do well with Dimension Fusion. We got our Demok, Jinzo, Sacred Cranes, We've got, you know, our broken spell cards, and then of course, you know, we got our reasonings, monster gates, and dimension fusions. So here's um, the first example deck list. Um, this is, you know, kind of a pretty standard list. This list has been around for a while. Um, you know, we've got Aeronite Parshaths and Sacred Cranes as our lights. We've got our standard Dark Magician Chaos and Jinzo for darks. Um, and then we've got like a few one of spell cards like Brain Control, um, Book of Moon, Monster Reincarnation. And then, you know, a couple of traps. You don't have to play exactly this list, of course, but if you're just starting out, this is probably a good list to try. Um, a new list that's kind of uh, come up recently, though, is, you know, what I, what I call a dedicated OTK list. And really, this is, 
you know, you'll notice here the main difference is we have a lot more card draw. We've got two upstart goblins and reckless greed. We've got, um, you know, thunder dragon of chaos with reload. And then he's got like tune table of contents. So this deck is a lot more consistent at like killing on, you know, the second turn, for example, rather than have to wait to like turn five to get the kill. So obviously, like, there's some advantages and disadvantages to going this route, um, but you do get the um, the faster kill. So to talk about um, the deck's strengths and weaknesses, it's it's kind of the definition of high risk, high reward. You have a lot of cards that um, you know can either be dead or have something go wrong. So. Um, you know, sometimes you have a hand that's like double reasoning, you activate both of them, your opponent calls it right both times, and now there's not a lot you can do. Um, sometimes, like, you, you open the Dark Magician of Chaos and then can't special summon it off of your reasoning or monster gate, which can be a problem. Sometimes you have, like, dead metamorphoses, or, you know, in the case of the second list, dead Thunder Dragons. Um, or rather, you have Thunder Dragons in your deck that you're special summoning off reasoning and monster gate. So, um,. If, you know, consistency is your thing, maybe you don't want to play this deck um, necessarily. Um, it can be frustrating to get those brick hands, but the nice thing is you get like a lot of auto win hands too. So it's it kind of depends on what your style is. Probably the biggest strength of Reasoning Gate, uh, in my personal opinion, is that it really does well against Go Control. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that Reasoning Gate is probably Goat Control's worst matchup. And why is that? Um, largely because Goat Control just has a lot of cards that are just either completely dead, like Nobleman of Crossout, or really situational, like Dust Tornado, or, you know, cards that, while they're not situational, they're also not very strong. Like, take Book of Moon, for example. It's, like, great. It, it, sorry, it's not great, but, like, it's not totally dead either. Um, also, you know, if you look at a card like Air Knight Parshath, um, Goat Control is probably, you know, their deck's going to be too slow to take advantage of Air Knight Parshath, right? Because, you know, Reasoning Gate is, you know, going to be doing stuff on, like, turn two, turn three. Whereas, on the other hand, um, the Reasoning Gate player can bring out their Air Knight Parshath really quickly. They can get them out on, like, turn one, turn two. So, um... You know, the Reasoning Gate player is going to be able to trample over their goats with their Air Knight Parshaths, but the Goat Control player won't really be able to do the same quite as effectively. And, um, a, a weakness of this deck can potentially be that, um, like, Chaos Control can be a hard matchup just because they have Scapegoat to stop OTKs, and then they have, like, Chaos Sorcerer to fill up their own Banished pile, so that way, like, Dimension Fusion isn't as good. Um, so, if you're playing the more dedicated OTK version of the Reasoning Gate deck, uh, I think Chaos Control gets a lot easier, but if you're playing the more standard build, um, it, it, it can be hard just because you're giving Chaos Control a decent amount of time to set up their defenses. So, common misconceptions about Reasoning Gate combo, um, although it is, you know, higher variance than something like Go Control, it's still like not as inconsistent as a lot of people think it is. This isn't like a, oh, you're never gonna win unless you get lucky kind of deck. It's actually like, it's actually a very strong deck. Um, I like to say that it kind of has like a current format style play, right, where you're sort of summoning a lot of monsters in one turn, you know, building up a really um, strong board. So if you're the type of person who's coming over from current format to Go format, you might like this deck. Um, and something interesting to note is that it kind of requires different skills than other decks in GOAT format, which is why, like, it's kind of misunderstood. So, it's obviously not a control deck, so, um, it's going to play a lot differently than something like GOAT control or chaos control. Um, but at the same time, it also plays a little differently than the other combo decks in the format, because, um, reasoning gate combo doesn't do the same exact combo every time. So, like, if you take another combo deck like Empty Jar, for example, they're doing, like, their combo always works the same, right? It's either a Cyber Jar and a Morphing Jar with a bunch of Book of Moons and Book of Teus and Shallow Graves. Um, if you take something like Library FTK, you know, it's always just Royal Magical Library with a bunch of spells. Here, um, although it is a combo deck, it's not, like, the same combo every time. Um, so, you know, knowing, like, how long should I wait to go off, 
to give you like good odds not to fizzle out. That's like kind of the skill that other decks don't have. Um, deciding whether or not you're going to go off on like turn two, turn three, or turn four isn't a choice that like most other decks are forced to consider. So that being said, um, the the deck guide is over. So I want to thank everyone for watching. And um, I also want to tell you about a few opportunities to support our community if you haven't already. Uh, obviously, GoatFormat.com is going to be really your number one resource to learn about Goat Format. Um, if you're looking for you know, a community, you're going to want to join our Discord server here. And then we've got um, a bunch of social media accounts. A couple of them are new. Um, I want to call out our Twitter and our Instagram in particular. Um, our Twitter account is new. Um, it'll tell you any time we've got a new article. And it'll also you know, tweet like some funny quotes from our Discord server. And then also we've got um, a guy named Sacked running our Instagram and basically, if you're a visual learner, if you like seeing pictures of, uh, you know, sexy holographic GOAT format cards, you're going to want to check that out. So, um, that being said, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll try to get some more content up soon. Thanks, guys.